What's in a name? A Dinobot by any other name would munch as much metal. It's a regular identity crisis this week, as we look at the basics on the brutish bot known by many names. Slug. The toy that would become the Autobot eventually known as Slug was first released in 1984, as part of the Japanese toy line Diaclone. The figure was one of the Dinosaur Robo subline of mechanical dinosaurs, and transformed into a Triceratops. The Dinosaur Robo were imported by Hasbro and released as part of the second year of the Transformers toy line in 1985, as the Dinobots, a team of powerful, rebellious Autobots who resented the command of Optimus Prime. Profiles for the Dinobots were written by Marvel Comics writer Bob Budiansky, who named the Triceratops Slag. Slag was the most hostile, violent member of the team, a nasty, mean-spirited bot prone to fighting with his comrades, who could shoot a stream of fire from his mouth in Dino mode that was hot enough to reduce Decepticons to molten metal. This was the origin of his name, Slag being a waste product created in the smelting of metal. In the original Transformers animated series, Slag and the Dinobots were built on Earth by the Autobots, and were primitive bots of low intelligence. The team enjoyed multiple showcase appearances throughout the show's first two seasons, their bestial nature and rebellious attitude often causing as much trouble for the Autobots as it did for the Decepticons, even leading the Dinobots to turn on their creators more than once. Bodiansky had intended for Slag's flame breath to be a unique ability, but the cartoon often showed the other Dinobots also breathing fire, and this would carry forward into multiple future depictions of the team, somewhat diminishing Slag's uniqueness. The continued availability of the Dinobots' toys in 1986 earned them supporting roles in The Transformers The Movie, which marked a shift in their depiction that began to play their lack of smarts more for comedy, with Slag in particular delivering some of the film's most quoted jokes, arguing with his leader Grimlock, Me, Grimlock, positive, hot rod and cop close! Me, Slag, say you full of viridium baloney! and apologizing to a Quintesson the Dinobots had trampled. Excuse me! Slag continued to make occasional appearances in the subsequent third season of the cartoon, and had a few brief cameos in the Japanese original sequel series, The Headmasters. The Dinobots were depicted very differently in the Marvel comic book, in which they were part of the crew of the Autobot spaceship The Ark when it crash-landed on Earth four million years ago. Regular bots of normal intelligence, they were given their dino modes by the ship's computer when it reactivated them to battle the Decepticon Shockwave, but they wound up being trapped in a tar pit for millennia until being revived by Autobot medic Ratchet in the present day. The team were favourites of British writer Simon Furman, and starred in multiple exclusive stories that he wrote for the United Kingdom's version of the comic, striking out on their own adventures that brought them into conflict with Autobots, Decepticons and humans alike. The discontinuation of the Dinobots toys in 1987 saw them phased out of the comic, some of the many Transformers taken offline by the cosmically powered Starscream. But they weren't gone for long. In 1990, Furman revived them to star in new stories in both the US and UK comics. Slag was showcased in a comedic UK story, which revealed that once every four million years or so, he was consumed by a berserker rage, which required the other Dinobots to keep him subdued and hidden while Optimus Prime was conducting a base inspection. Furman had plans for a future story in which Slag would be adversely affected by the Nucleon superfuel that had been used to revive the Dinobots, and left trapped in this mindless berserker state, but the comic was cancelled before he could tell it. Slag's toy was re-released in 1993 as part of the Transformers Generation 2 toy line in new green and rare red variant colour schemes, and he continued to appear functioning as normal in Marvel's tie-in Generation 2 comic. 
but Furman would eventually get the chance to tell his planned story in the 2012 sequel series Regeneration 1, in which Slag succumbed to madness and Grimlock set out to find a cure for his condition. In the 21st century, new incarnations of Slag have featured fairly regularly in new Transformers series, some inspired by the simple-minded bot of the cartoon, and others by the hostile comic book character. But as this new era began, Slag's name posed a problem. You see, in 1996, the Beast Wars cartoon began using the word Slag as a Transformer swear word. Slag! What the slagging? Slag the High Council. Holy Slag! But the thing is, in the United Kingdom, Slag actually is a rude word used to insult women. And while nobody passed comment on the Dinobot back in the 80s, Beast Wars wasn't so lucky, and the word had to be edited out of the show's UK broadcasts. To avoid this issue in the future, Hasbro concluded that Slag's name was going to have to change. At first, in the 2000s, comic books targeted at adult readers, like those from Dreamwave Productions and IDW Publishing, were allowed to keep using it, but for toys and cartoons, it was a no-go. The first attempt at a replacement was offered by 2002's Transformers Dinobots toy line, which featured a new Beast Wars-inspired version of the team with organic dinosaur modes, but which renamed the Triceratops Triceradon. This name wasn't great. It broke the pattern of the Dinobots' names starting with the letter S. So for the next attempt, in Transformers Animated in 2008, Slag was renamed Snarl, simply stealing the name of one of the other Dinobots who didn't appear in this new series. The animated Dinobots were theme park animatronics modified by Megatron and brought to life by the power of the AllSpark. They lived in seclusion on an island in Lake Erie, their simple minds leading them to often fall under the sway of villains seeking to exploit their power. Unable to speak, and with little more intelligence than an animal, Snarl befriended the Constructicon Scrapper after he was stranded on the island, and the pair were recruited by Sari Sumdak to join her League of Substitute Autobots to help save Optimus Prime's team when they fell under Soundwave's mind control. Scrapper was the one who named Snarl, and the cartoon even made a joke about the whole unfortunate real-world situation. You named him Snarl? Well, I was gonna call him Slag, but I think he took it as an insult. The name Snarl was also applied to a super-deformed Robot Heroes figurine of the original Slag, but using the name of one of the other Dinobots was a short-term fix, as it wouldn't work for any future series that featured all five members of the team. That was the problem faced by the 2012 video game Fall of Cybertron, for which Slag had to be renamed again, this time as Slug. The game detailed how Slug and the Dinobots gained their dino modes when they were captured and experimented on by Shockwave during the war on Cybertron. Their story continued in tie-in comic books, which gave Slug a brief turn in the spotlight when he tried to overcome his long-standing anger issues and help the wounded Decepticon blackout. As a word with violent connotations, meaning both a bullet or the act of punching someone, Slug proved a good fit for the character and became his permanent new name, used in all future series and toy lines. IDW's comics even made a joke out of it, having Slag choose to change his name to Slug in-universe after female Autobot RC told him his old name was offensive. IDW stories really saw Slug come to the fore, as he assumed leadership of the Dinobots after Grimlock was separated from the team. After the war ended, Slug struggled to adapt, knowing that a killing machine like him had no place in peacetime, but he would later find a new purpose in life when he and the Dinobots stumbled upon a field of newborn Cybertronian sparks, and took up the job of defending them against the evil intentions of the Arcane Decepticon, Bludgeon. In the end, knowing that he could never fully let go of his violent ways, Slug sacrificed his life to destroy Bludgeon, believing that a future without bots like himself was the greatest gift that Slug could leave behind for the next generation. 
Slug joined the world of the live-action movies in the 2014 film Age of Extinction, in which he and the Dinobots were ancient Cybertronian knights captured by the bounty hunter Lockdown. After being freed by Optimus Prime, Slug allowed Autobot Samurai Drift to ride him into battle, and he later made a brief return in the 2017 sequel The Last Knight. Slug's appearance on the big screen was followed by the release of many new toys of the Dinobots' various incarnations, most notable among them one in 2018's Power of the Primes toy line. Based on the original Generation 1 toy, it could combine with the other Dinobots released in the series to form the giant robot Volcanicus. These new toys earned Slug and his team appearances in several pieces of media, most notably Machinima's Power of the Primes webtoon. And a few years later, in 2021, they also served as inspiration for the new version of the Dinobots featured in Transformers Cyberverse. This series reimagined Slug, Snarl, Swoop, and Sludge as young Transformers from a Cybertronian colony on another planet, who all idolized Grimlock from afar. When their world was destroyed by a gang of mercenaries, they followed the villains to Cybertron, where the mystical Enigma of Combination combined them with their hero Grimlock into Volcanicus to save the planet. 2021 also saw the release of a large figure of the original version of the character in the Studio Series toy line. Though based directly on his appearance in the 80s cartoon, it was, of course, sold under the name Slug, as we can expect all future toys of the character to be. But whatever his name is, as a Dinobot, we can always call him a fan favourite. And that's no beryllium baloney. And those are the basics on Slug, Slag, Snarl, whatever you want to call him. For more Transformers history and lore like this, don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the bell to be notified about new episodes, which you can get early access to if you support the series on Patreon.